hey guys welcome back to my channel diaries of a lunar soul so today's reading is going to be about the stages of sacred union the general phases you will go through as you embark on this journey to find sacred union both internally this is within yourself and externally this is with another person but in this reading i will focus specifically on sacred union with self this is the integration of your inner divine feminine and inner divine masculine. And we all have both of these energies within us, but normally one energy is usually more dominant than the other. And that's why some people identify as divine masculine and others more as divine feminine. Regardless, we each have both of these energies, the yin and yang energies within. And until we find sacred union with self, until we integrate these two energies within us, you will not find sacred union with another divine masculine or another divine feminine. And integration doesn't mean that the two energies have to be equal. This is 50-50. No. To me, integration means finding that point where both of these energies cooperate harmoniously and do just what they're meant to do. Not too much, not too little. So for someone who identifies more as a divine feminine, integration or sacred union could mean 60% feminine energy and 40% masculine energy. And at times, depending on the situation, these energies may swap. You may have to be 60% masculine and 40% feminine in order to maintain balance within yourself. And it's just like like when you're driving a car. The way to maintain balance is not just by holding the steering wheel in one fixed position, right? We usually turn the steering wheel from left to right or back and forth in order for the car to run straight on the road, yeah? So it's the same for sacred union with self. It's something you keep working on and adjusting from time to time depending on the situation that's in front of you. And although each individual will have a different journey, the phases Spirit wants me to talk about in this reading are a representation of the general stages you will most likely go through, even in your solo journey. The difference between your journey and someone else's journey will be seen in the way the events or experiences play out in your life. Okay, so... Using my own personal experience, I figured there are like five general phases or stages and the first four, stage one to four, are usually to do with sacred union with self. Then the fifth stage is when you finally achieve sacred union with another human being here on earth. So in this reading, we shall look at the first three stages of union. This is the journey towards sacred union with self. And also look at what energies support and challenge your inner divine masculine and inner divine feminine in these three stages. And then we shall end up by we shall end the reading by looking at the dance between the inner divine feminine and the and your inner divine masculine during these first three stages of initial divine union with self. And this means we shall just look at the dynamic between the masculine and the feminine energies and how they operate within you together during these three stages. And remember I said earlier that spiritual balance is like driving a car, moving the steering wheel back and forth to keep the car running straight on the road. Well, we shall see how the male and female energies also move back and forth within you during this journey towards sacred union. Great, so as usual, the reading is timeless, meaning whenever you click on this video, that spirit's way of bringing the message to you. And if it doesn't resonate, then it just means I'm not tuning into your frequency at the moment. And maybe if you watch the video at a later date, it will resonate. Or maybe it might never resonate, yeah? Anyway, so also, I've already shuffled the cards and picked them off camera. If you want to know why I do this off camera, please check out the description box below. But for now, let's begin. Okay, so let's start with the general theme of the reading. And we have 
the empress not surprised the lovers and life experience hmm and by the way this life experience in traditional tarot is just the tower okay so it's not surprising that the empress showed up as a general theme because usually on this path to enlightenment and sacred union with self it's usually the feminine energy within you that awakens first and then helps to awaken the masculine energy within you so before your inner masculine energy awakens your inner feminine energy is the one that holds the space for sacred union the feminine energy nurtures the union see it says here nurture yourself and others and to me in tarot i usually see the empress as the divine feminine then with the lovers here it just represents sacred union itself again spirit is being very straightforward here and of course this could also mean a soulmate partnership with someone else but in this instance since we are looking at the journey towards sacred union itself this lovers card here represents the relationship you have with yourself it says here intimate relationships which is usually the most important relationship you will ever have because you should unconditionally love what you see in the mirror before you can experience unconditional love with another person and that's why in the beginning i said you can never experience sacred union with another person until you find sacred union with self so spirit here is just emphasizing that message intimate union with yourself first okay then with this tower card or life experience in this deck it just means when you start this journey of sacred union with self you will have to break down some false limiting beliefs you had about yourself see this tower here is crashing i hope you can see it's crashing down <laughs> because it was probably built on weak foundations so this card here as spirit is saying you will go through some challenging or rather tower moments and experiences on this journey towards secret union itself but spirit is also saying that with these challenges with this breakdown you will also experience a breakthrough which is the other meaning of the tower card yeah and it means with every ending there's a beginning so break down and break through and they are also saying i can hear them say the challenges that this tower card here will bring means you will have to make some tough complex and comfortable decisions which by the way is the is the other meaning of this lovers card you will be faced with choices of the highest moral grounds see here carefully weigh your decisions but this is so as to give birth to this new awakened and balanced self and in fact in tarot in traditional tarot this empress here is usually depicted as a pregnant woman symbolizing birth and growth right so that's the general theme so we shall see how these energies will play out in the main reading okay so now let's see what spirit has to say about the first stage what happens in the first phase of sacred union with self okay hope we'll have space for the rest of the cards so what happens in the first phase of sacred union with self and we have the 10 of cups interesting the moon the hanged man the king of wands okay this is an interesting combination in an oracle deck surrender to the divine okay let's see This is a this is a tricky combination. Well, let me try and explain what I see. So, with the moon, 
and this hanged man over here Spirit is saying you will suddenly feel this strong intuitive feeling that there's more to life than what you're currently experiencing because to me the moon usually represents our intuition that side of you that knows things but you don't know how you know <laughs> but you just know and then the hanged man usually means seeing things from a different perspective a sudden awakening or enlightenment See how this guy is hanging upside down to show seeing things from a different angle. And see his head is lit up with a halo to represent enlightenment. So yeah, so having realized there's more to life, you decide to embark on this journey to find this emotional fulfillment that you so seek or want. The Ten of Cups usually represent emotional fulfillment. And the king of wands is a visionary and is always ready to take action. And the wands in tarot usually represent spiritual growth or being on an intense spiritual journey. So with this king of wands energy backing you up, you start this new phase of life where you begin your journey towards this ten of cups. And as I've said, the ten of cups usually means emotional fulfillment and having harmonious relationships see here how this family is celebrating life and is content this is what you realize you want in the first stage and you make the decision to do whatever it takes to achieve your goal of happiness that is spiritually supported and ordained because the king of wands is very confident and doesn't compromise his happiness when he wants something he gets it he goes and gets it yeah so at this stage you reach a point in time where you won't settle for only the happiness that comes from the earthly 3d possessions no you realize that material things are not enough and so you seek happiness of a higher nature fifth dimension emotional fulfillment and then so that means you surrender to the divine you surrender to your intuition you let that inner voice represented here by the moon to lead your choices because remember you don't know how you know but you just know it's the right path and so you let your intuition the divine yeah, the divine take the lead and guide you so that's what's happening in the first phase okay so let's see what energies are supporting you and challenging you during this first stage and we have <laughs> surrender to your full power uh, again not surprised and child wounded for the energy challenging you okay let me take in these energies yeah so with this surrender to your full power your life is calling you for you to step into your full power rather than playing it small i hope you can read that and it's exactly what I just said about the king of wands here. Yeah. You realize that you will not play it small any longer. You won't compromise your happiness and you're ready to go through whatever challenges that might come your way on your road to spiritual enlightenment and emotional fulfillment. But with a child wounded here, blames all dysfunctional relationships on childhood wounds resists moving on through forgiveness awakens compassion and desire to serve other wounded children opens the learning path for forgiveness yeah with a child wounded here spirit is saying the challenges you will encounter at this stage will most likely stem from your childhood conditioning no matter how good your childhood was, we all have those traumatic events that occurred. 
that cause us to create certain beliefs about ourselves or the world around us yeah and these beliefs beliefs I don't know why I keep saying beliefs so these beliefs they could be unconscious or conscious they could be limiting or empowering but in this instance because this card came up in the position of challenges you will face at this stage then I think this means it's the limiting beliefs that will crop up. For example, being scared to go against what you were taught about how to handle emotions. And this will especially happen for the masculine energy, which is usually conditioned from a very early age to not show emotions because apparently emotions are a sign of weakness. Yeah. And then other childhood wounds could also be codependency relying too much on your parents or guardians for support or other people for support which causes you to not know or be scared of being independent and then also fear of abandonment maybe some of you had a rough childhood where your parents or guardians or people you loved were hardly ever around and you had to literally fend for yourself and in such situations you unconsciously built up a wall which makes you resist help from other people because you're scared that if you let your guard down somewhere down the line they may abandon you so however your childhood played out it's at this stage one that all these limiting beliefs from your childhood will come up and some will be tough to face especially things like codependency and fear of abandonment and some may be easy to break down such as self-pity yeah and by the way, these are just examples. So please don't quote me word for word on this. Yeah, so at this stage one, you will battle a lot with your inner child. And there's this nice podcast by James Hillman called Abandoning the Child. He talks about childhood wounds and how to best manage your inner child so that it doesn't dictate your life. So you should have a look at it when you get time. I'll put a link to it in the description below in case you're interested and at this stage for me i remember when i started this journey towards secret union and enlightenment for an entire year every day no kidding guys every day i had dreams about my childhood friends people i had not seen for almost 18 years and i kept wondering what on earth is going on <laughs> i have no idea why i was having these dreams about people from my childhood and then later on in my journeys when I started getting epiphanies and messages from my spirit guides about what those dreams meant. So my inner child was being reconditioned and the way my spirit guides were doing this was through my dreams. And actually now that I'm talking about dreams, for most of you watching this, because I'm reading this from my own perspective and how my own journey began, if this reading resonates with you, then you will most likely start to connect with your spirit guides through your dreams in this first phase of secret union. So pay attention to your dreams. Keep a dream journal if you can. And because you will start to see the patterns in your dreams and you will realize they were not just dreams or rather they are not just dreams, but actually messages from your spirit guides. Okay, so I guess now I can see how the general themes here are playing out in this first stage. The Empress here is what gives birth to this new idea in you. See, it says give birth to your dreams. So it's what gives birth to this new idea in you that there's more to life. Your urge to grow and nurture your soul beyond what you already are. Then the lovers here man this card is not coming up the lovers here is your decision to embark on this journey towards a better life see again decisions right so one that is emotionally fulfilling the decision to embark on a more spiritual path or better life more fulfilling life more satisfaction in life other than what you've been experiencing at the moment and then this life experiences or the tower card is you realizing that 
in order to start this new journey towards enlightenment you will have to break down those childhood wounds and limiting beliefs you had about what emotional fulfillment is and what brings emotional fulfillment wow okay see a powerful revelation that takes that leads to change a significant life event so you breaking down those childhood wounds and limiting beliefs that were holding you back from experiencing true emotional fulfillment oh okay hopefully what i've said makes sense <laughs> because usually it's so hard to express energy in words i know and feel what the cards are saying but sometimes there are no words that can properly express what i know and feel from the cards but i know you got it you guys have sharp minds and usually with tarot the more you listen to the messages the more it triggers your own intuition and then you begin to start seeing your own messages or meanings beyond what you see and what i'm seeing okay great so let's move on let's see now what the second stage has in store for you and at this point at this point where you're now getting into the set to the second stage you have battled with your inner child wounds and succeeded in breaking them down or if you haven't yet succeeded you're at least aware of those inner child wounds they're no longer in your unconscious mind when a false limiting belief is in our conscious mind it can no longer control us it may crop up from time to time but it won't control us because we will know when it's there and we become the observer and not the participant the problem usually starts when you identify with a belief which makes you which makes you to participate in it so by just being an observer you're bringing awareness to the problem and as Eckhart Tolle says awareness is enough just knowing about this inner childhood wounds is enough it's a good start okay cool so before i start preaching here because i love Eckhart Tolle so before i start preaching about his messages and everything let's see what spirit has to say about this second stage and we have the 9 of pentacles the justice card the devil the 9 of pentacles okay i hope i said 9 of cups for this one can't remember <laughs> anyway and meditate and contemplate oh gosh man this is another tough combination okay let me think All right. I got it. So in stage 2, you get to a point where you're very content and happy with your life. The 9 of cups and the 9 of pentacles usually represent being good on your own, happy and content. See how this guy in this 9 of cups is sitting here looking all happy and satisfied with his life. his nine gold cups up here and just chilling the only thing missing is him at the beach <laughs> then this nine of pentacles see how this lady is enjoying the little luxuries of life in the garden smelling the flowers playing with the bird to show inner peace and calm no stress yeah but with the devil and the justice cards here spirit is saying that it's at this stage that you actually become aware of the masculine and feminine energies within you and the roles they play in your life and how an imbalance between these two energies could take you back to being overly focused on material gains 
and wealth that emotional happiness that is brought about by earthly possessions because with the devil the spirit is saying you will have reached a place where you are content with how your life is playing out and you're emotionally and materially stable with this 9 of cups and this 9 of pentacles and then you may start to think that this is the end of the journey that you have reached your goal of emotional fulfillment and because you think you have reached the goal you relax and stop working on your spiritual growth and expansion and as a result the 3D world starts to seduce you again the devil the devil in tarot represents illusions an energy of manipulation not seeing things for what they truly are and so you become trapped see this man and this woman are bound by a chain yeah tied to this devil energy and this to me shows entrapment of your inner divine feminine and in a divine masculine energy and then remember what i said about the spiritual journey at the beginning i said it's like driving a car and you have to constantly shift the steering wheel back and forth rarely do you just stick in one position otherwise the car will veer off the road and crash to maintain balance you have to keep turning the wheel back and forth yeah well it's the same concept with spiritual growth and sacred union you should continuously nurture your soul the empress energy over here nurture yourself and others it's like a flower if you stop watering it it will wither and die right yeah so the justice card here is saying at this stage you realize or learn that you can't be too complacent <laughs> you will have to learn how to balance action and non action see the scales here in this card they represent this balance between your inner feminine and masculine energies and so to counter this div- devil energy spirit is saying it's at this stage that you seriously start to consciously meditate and do your ascension work before in stage 1 here you are mostly just going with the flow and surrendering to the divine <laughs> you didn't really know what was pushing you ahead you just trusted your instinct and went with the flow but in stage 2 the universe literally pushes you into the driver's seat and you become in charge of your journey and that's why this 9 of pentacles is here to mean being independent and good on your own and while yes your spirit guides and the universe still hold heartedly support you through this journey at stage 2 your spirit guides become the co-driver and take a back seat i remember for me this phase this stage 2 came out of freaking nowhere and i must say it was one of the worst tower moments i have ever had in a very long time <laughs> now i'm laughing but then it was no freaking joke i was feeling content with my life and where i was at financially and i remember i was saying now all i need is my masculine to show up to complete this cycle <laughs> and while i did not completely stop doing my spiritual work I must say the effort I was putting in was like half. If I was putting in 80% in stage 1, when I got to this stage 2 here, I think I was putting in only 35%. And this is because in my mind I was like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I've learned all I need to learn. Now I just need my person. Where is he? Masculine, come, come, come. I'm ready. <laughs> That was the mindset I was in. Well, shock on me. Out of nowhere, this stage 2, my mood suddenly dropped to the point of depression. I was still very okay financially and materially and I really didn't have material concerns. I was stable. 
but every morning for like a week and a half i'd wake up so sad and i couldn't explain why i was like what the hell <laughs> literally devil what the hell <laughs> i was like why isn't this manifesting i've done everything i'm good why isn't it manifesting anyway to cut the long story short one day during this dark devil dark night of the soul period for some reason my guides just started bombarding me with the number 444 as in everywhere i looked i saw this number there's a time i had gone for lunch with my family and literally where i parked the car i saw five other cars parked with the number plate 444 five cars the message couldn't be any clearer i was like what the hell so when i got back home i checked the meaning of 444 and i saw it means stability and balance i did more research and my guides kept on giving me clues and sending me signs about feminine and masculine energies but at this point i had a vague very vague idea of the yin and yang energies and i was not fully aware of how the inner divine feminine and inner divine masculine play inside of us so i did more research and then i realized after a couple of days that my spirit guides were trying to tell me that my inner divine feminine and inner divine masculine energies were out of sync they were completely out of balance so i decided to do my ascension work meditate and contemplate and for me because i'm clairaudient listening to binaural beats and meditative music was very healing and soothing and then i also did a lot of distant reiki healing sessions which you can find all over youtube if you don't have the money to pay for a personal session there's this channel by neil cooper he has very good distant reiki healing sessions you should try and check it out if you're interested anyway so in doing this i started feeling like i'm coming back into balance again inner peace was coming back i was no longer as sad as i was before wondering where the hell is my masculine <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this is interesting this reading is ending up being me revelating is there anything okay a revelation of my own journey there's nothing like revelating my a revel it's ending up being a revelation of my own journey anyway oh well if speaking about my journey helps one person then so be it i shall speak about it <laughs> anyway okay so now let's see what spirit has to say about the energies supporting you and challenging you at this second stage and we have surrender to your soul's path and femme fatale huh so this is the energy supporting you and this is the energy challenging you okay yeah so this is exactly what i've i have just described above as what was happening with me during this stage remember i said i had stopped working as hard on my spiritual journey because i thought i had reached the destination i was only putting in like 35 percent instead of 80 90 or even 100 percent well this surrender to your soul's path your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Embrace every lesson in every moment. This energy here tells me that that 35% was still supporting me in some way. Which just shows how doing something sometimes is still better than doing nothing. My 35% was still good enough. And that's because... I still believed that I will meet my masculine. In fact, for me, I was still freaking waiting for him. I didn't give up. Even during the sad period that I went through, I was so tempted. I was very tempted to let go. But for some reason, I just held on strongly to my vision. This king of wands here. Energy was still somewhere inside of me, despite that sad period I was going through at that time. So I kept on surrendering to my soul's path 
even at that 35 percent that vision i saw of being together with my masculine here in the physical plane and that supported me that was the energy that supported me and that's probably the energy that will support you during your stage two you holding on to your vision and even though i was going through this femme fatale challenge over here attachment to power and money probably being in your distorted feminine energy because it says inappropriate use of sensuality so even though i was struggling with being in my distorted feminine energy where for me i saw attachment to material possessions as how it will bring me happiness attachment to material happiness let me put it like that through the ascension work i was doing here with meditate and contemplate i stopped seeing things i stopped seeing the world solely from the 3d perspective this devil energy over here which also symbolizes putting too much focus on the material wealth attachment attachment to power and money yeah and i started seeing things from my higher self again my 5d self my soul my spirit yeah and in fact i've noticed that this card here says new moon in pisces hope you can see in astrology pisces is ruled by neptune the planet of illusions things behind the scenes neptune shows us how to derive purpose from life but look by looking at things beyond the naked eye using your third eye to navigate away from this 3d devil energy yeah so in stage two spirit is saying the 3d world will try and seduce you this devil energy here and it will try and seduce you back to thinking earthly possessions are the only way to emotional fulfillment you will be tempted to go back to operating from your childhood wounds and childhood beliefs about emotional fulfillment but the energy supporting you through this challenging time is your ability to stick to your path to stick to your soul's path and your willingness to continue doing the work your spiritual work towards ascension meditating so at this point you haven't yet integrated in your, your inner divine feminine and inner divine masculine that is why sacred union hasn't happened yet sacred union with another person hasn't happened yet but at this stage you're now aware of the roles the inner divine feminine and divine masculine inner divine masculine play within you you're fully aware and so you begin to nurture the empress energy here these two opposing forces you realize that the, you realize that the only way to achieve sacred union with another being with the lovers here is by first achieving sacred union with self balancing your inner divine feminine and inner divine masculine energies so in the process you again start to let go and break free and get out of your shell from this tower yeah this crashing tower that had you trapped in the 3d world and you get back on your true soul path this is seeking spiritual emotional fulfillment because see here in this life experience or other tower card it says time to spread your wings no more being bound by these chains here with the devil card these chains over here great okay let's see so now i think let's see the fin the not the final stage but stage 3 What does stage 3 have in store? And we have the four of wands. I always love when that card comes up. <clears throat> okay, well, the three of swords. This is not such a nice energy. 
the, the three of pentacles and the ten of pentacles okay well these cards now need to be seen I'm a perfectionist guys <laughs> I have a way of I need things to be seen things need to be perfectly aligned so yeah just bear with me a little bit <laughs> okay I think now you know you still can't see anything yeah okay at least something can be seen the problems of being a perfectionist <laughs> okay 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 got it let's move that oh gosh this camera i need to buy a new stand so that you can see everything okay okay that's it i think i can't move anymore right so maybe let's put this compress energy like this and the lovers there and the lovers and the life experience there. <sighs> okay right 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 back to a normal broadcasting so at this point you've realized you need to balance your male and female energies and you have been putting in the work to bring your manifestation into reality your manifestation of a stable and i've forgotten to also put another card for the oracle fiery climax approaches yeah your manifestation of stable and emotionally fulfilling relationships and life in general because the four of wands is usually a card of manifestation 11 11 see it shows you've been rapidly growing and expanding and now you've reached a point in your journey where you want to start enjoying the fruits of your labor but when it's paired here with the three of swords spirit is saying at this stage three you still have some inner work to do in order to manifest this happy home and family life yeah depicted here by the ten of pentacles spirit is saying at this stage although you may feel ready for sacred union it's still not yet time and this is because there are some past heartbreaks and relationship wounds that you need to get get over or resolve or let go the three of swords brings with it an energy of feeling hurt and disappointed so in stage one it's the childhood wounds in stage two it's your attachment the femme fatale your attachment to material wealth or material possessions in stage three it's all about your ability to heal past heartbreaks your ability to release the pain and forgive people who have wronged you. And to me, this stage, I think, was the toughest. Because at this stage is when you start to learn that you don't have to always be right. And that you should let others have a chance of being right. Which at times is the best way to resolve conflicts and improve relationships. You start to learn the art of compromising. Because the threes, and I can see we have three two threes over here <laughs> it's a tongue twister so the threes in tarot represent teamwork and cooperation and the three of pentacles showing up here means the lesson you're integrating at this stage is that of seeing the other person's perspective and understanding where they were coming from see here this painter is this a painter okay let me say artist is showcasing his work to these guys over here but at the same time is also getting advice from these experts okay um i don't know if you guys can see what i'm seeing but anyway that's what's going on over here <laughs> just trust me <laughs> so you're learning that it is not all about you 
me 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 because this fiery climax approaches it says full moon in aries and aries is a fast zodiac sign and it rules the first house in your astrology chart which is all about the self your personal identity yeah the me mentality and by the way if you're an aries watching this i'm not saying you're self-centered no i'm just saying you have an, a strong affinity towards being self-centered <laughs> It's all about you. But I'm joking, yeah? Take this lightly. Anyway, so this showing up here is just pretty sort of saying at this stage you will battle a lot with trying to see other people's perspective, especially if those people hurt you in the past. And the lesson you're learning is that of compromise and forgiveness. And it doesn't mean you become a rag or you let people walk all over you. No, it means not holding on to resentments. When people hurt you, acknowledge the pain, speak up, but then move on. Okay? So at this stage, spirit or universe will start pushing you into situations where you will have to keep your heart open. Even when others wrong you with this three of swords energy over here. And I cannot stress just how bloody hard this phase was for me. <laughs> because the way I would deal with the resentments and heartbreaks was by shutting people out. Literally, forget they exist. <laughs> I'd just disappear and go quiet. But instead of me going quiet or retreating to my cave, my spirit guides would give me signs saying, No, Missy, you gotta stay here and work this out. Figure something out together. No more running away. Okay. Okay, so let's see what energies will be challenging you and supporting you at this stage. And we have Oh my goodness. <laughs> Isn't this just what I've just talked about? Surrender resentments. And when I was shuffling the cards, I remember I saw this card and I put it back because I was not ready to pick cards yet. So I returned it and said, if it needs to come up again, it will come up. And here it is. And it's exactly what I've just said now. Wow. Let me read what it says. Holding on to resentments only poisons you. Try to forgive others for their shortcomings and keep moving forward toward positive situations in your life. <laughs> wow. And then for the energy supporting you, sorry, the energy challenging you is the servant. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. So, with this surrender to resentments, I mean, this is self-explanatory, right? It's what I've said before. At this stage, spirit will keep pushing you into situations where you will continuously have to keep your heart open to forgiveness and compassion because holding on to resentments only poisons you. Then with this servant being the energy challenging you, the message I get from this is listen to the other person's perspective. A servant usually just does what the master tells them to do, yeah? Even if they know the master is wrong, for that moment when they're serving their master, they surrender their need to always be right. Because they know if they dare tell their master that they're wrong, chances are there will be some conflict or they'll be fired. So this goes back to what I said earlier at this stage. You're learning to surrender your need to always be right. To allow others the gift of being right as well. You're learning how to at times be the servant and not the master. Compromise. Delight in serving others with a free and loving heart see there's such a glare from the window anyway yeah so you're learning to be the servant and let others be right sometimes compromise the three of pentacles cooperation teamwork wow okay this reading is gonna be long so long 
gosh 49 minutes 50 minutes anyway we're almost done so before we look at the dance between the inner feminine and masculine energies this is the dynamic between the two and how you'll be shifting back and forth just like the car between these two energies if this reading here resonates with you i'm going to do an extended reading where i talk about how the phases of sacred union with self the fourth the fourth stage and then sacred union with another person the fifth stage will look like and we shall also get further guidance from divine spirit on how to best navigate these phases okay so if you're interested the link is in the description below great so let's finish off this reading by seeing how your inner feminine and masculine energies will relate to each other during these three stages of secret union and by the way during this whole period your movement through these phases is not always going to be in this order one two three you may jump from stage one two three and then back to two and then back to stage one and so on so it's not a consecutive process okay right so let's create space okay so for the feminine we have six of pentacles and the knight of wands okay yeah your feminine energy will be bouncing back and forth between give and take your inner feminine will be trying to balance between compassion and sharing her time with others and listening to other people's point of view versus deciding to go at it alone and nurturing herself first the six of pentacles is a card that represents sharing yourself could be time or material wealth with others see how this person is sharing their pentacles with the less fortunate and these guys seem to look like they're begging but see on this other hand this person is holding a scale to show moderation while you should share with others if you have more to give it is important to not overdo it and burn yourself out there should be some form of balance and that's why the knight of wands is here this knight can tend to be a bit self-occupied and full of himself charging forward towards his own spiritual enlightenment see unlike the six of pentacles this knight here is alone this six of pentacles are people but this knight here is alone so the feminine energy will be learning how to project her spiritual journey outwards by sharing her knowledge time and other resources with others versus keeping her journey personal private and intimate self-love because again remember what i said about the lovers here yeah the most important relationship you have is the relationship you have with yourself and if emotional fulfillment doesn't come from within first no amount of giving this six of pentacles no amount of giving to someone else will bring true happiness and usually on this journey towards sacred union with self or with another person it's very easy to fall back into our distorted feminine energies where we tend to over give thinking this is how we shall heal the resentments but the empress here which represents the divine feminine not the distorted feminine is clearly reminding you that you have to nurture yourself and others not just others but yourself there's yourself here okay don't forget yourself don't give and forget yourself balance here okay so in the first stage and the second stage your inner divine feminine is mostly focused on herself you'll be focused on nurturing yourself but then in the third stage here you'll be forced you'll be focused or rather forced to project that energy outwards through showing compassion and forgiveness to people who have hurt you this surrender to res surrender resentments okay cool then now let's look at for the masculine 
and we have the knight of pentacles and the ace of swords yeah so your inner masculine will be bouncing or rather moving back and forth between action and non-action knowing when to yield or surrender versus knowing when to charge forward and take the lead knowing when to surrender to the divine here versus knowing when it's time to get on the driver's seat to take charge of your awakening process that's what you'll be learning because with the knight of pentacles here spirit is saying there are times when you will need to pause and evaluate your choices before moving forward that's why this knight of pentacles is not moving in fact he's the only knight that doesn't move in traditional tarot all the other knights are usually shown as being on the move see this knight of wands yeah gosh oh my goodness yeah so see this knight of wands he's moving charging forward but this knight of pentacles is not moving so to me this shows non-action then the ace of swords here is a card of action seizing an opportunity without equivocation ready for battle so in the first stage you are mostly in this in this first stage you are mostly in this pentacles knight of pentacles energy where you were just going with the flow of the universe surrendering to the divine you are being pulled towards your path by an invisible force of course here i mean your intuition and your spirit guides but in the second and third stages your masculine energy quickly learns that at some point work has to be done for your manifestation to happen you can't just sit on the couch and wish for something and poof it miraculously happens in fact this is a lesson i learned the hard way i watched so many of those manifestation videos that said just if you think it you can conceive it it's all about your mindset well i soon realized the hard way just thinking it is not enough you have to put in the work you have to take necessary action towards what you want these videos where people tell you all all you have to do is just wish upon a star and you'll manifest are all missing one crucial step action because to me the law of attraction follows the same principle of give and take you have to give something in order for you to receive and in this instance the journey towards sacred union if you want to manifest spiritual union with another person with this four of wands here you have to put in the work and that means working on yourself first inner ascension work break down those limiting childhood beliefs you had surrender the idea that power and money will bring about your emotional fulfillment learn to open up your heart even when others hurt you and disappoint you with this surrender to resentments all these are the actions you'll have to take then once you have done all you can it's time to surrender to the divine here yeah. non action and let spirit do its magic for you Okay, so throughout all this, see how the 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 feminine energy and the masculine energy complement each other. When the feminine, let's see, let's put this. When the feminine is in this 6 of pentacles energy of empowering others, your inner masculine is in the, is in the take action, ace of swords energy. And when your inner masculine is in this knight of pentacles energy evaluating things and assessing the situation your inner feminine energy is usually in the me mentality energy of this knight of wands solely focused on her own self empowerment wow okay this has been the longest reading guys i think we're going to go past the one hour mark so let's wrap this up now Yeah. Okay, so let's finish off with guidance from spirit and ask Archangel Metatron who's my spirit guides for those not joining me in the extended what message do you have for them? 
and says honeybee there you have it guys let compassion and forgiveness be your top priority in this situation so at this point at stage three just surrender to surrender keep surrendering to resent keep leaving resentments behind don't let your past hold you back okay wow great so with that guys thank you so much for watching this extremely long video see you in my next reading i send you all the love and blessings bye